Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to flip through a book instead of a magazine and um, I want to include more book flip throughs so that we can get some inspiration or some ideas of what books to buy for what you may need to improve on or any help that you need you can um, grab one of these books that we flip through. So I hope that you find this useful. Um, I will put a link in the description below on where you might be able to find this book and let's get into the video. So it's an introduction and how to use the book. I'm not going to go into too much depth. We're just going to have a quick flip through um, as you would if you was in like the shop and flip through the book to see if you'd like to buy it or not, basically. So table of contents is chapter one, drawing materials, chapter two, the basic elements of drawing. Chapter 3, Beginning to Draw, The Essentials. Chapter 4, First Exercises. Chapter 5, Basic Techniques. Chapter 6, Light and Shadow. Chapter 7, Still Life Projects. Chapter 8, Cosmo um, Composition. Chapter 9, Perspective in Art. Chapter 10, Drawing Textures. Chapter 11, Drawing People. Chapter 12, The Artist Survival Guide. I'm not sure how old this book is as well, so if it's... You know, if it's that, sometimes some of these art books can be quite old, so it might take some digging to find them. Um, so I'm not sure. I'll see if it's, it might tell us at the end when it was, um, I don't, didn't see. Let's see if it tells us. Yeah, it doesn't say. Anyway, if we, if I, if I can find it, that will help us. So this is chapter one, drawing the materials, and it goes through the, graphite pencils, lead hardness and softness, um, mechanical pencil, I always use a mechanical pencil, those lead holder pencils are quite good as well, um, but if you know, for beginners you just want to get a pack of the HB pencils that's shown in the bar above with the different, um, you know, the different grades that, that it has, so that's that. And then you've got, then we go through the charcoal, what different types of charcoal that you can get. And then if you are doing charcoal drawing, you want to get a fixative because you don't want the drawing to smudge. <clears throat> so like it says here, fin a finish with a fixative because um, charcoal doesn't adhere well to the paper. So yeah, I would recommend as well trying a range of charcoal. So you've got charcoal pencils, carbon pencils, compressed charcoal sticks and natural charcoal sticks white charcoal pencils so you kind of have to just try them different types out and then see which one suits you and then we've got pastels i p i love oil pastels and they're my favorite to use um they're quite fun because you can mix them you can put work with your hand like work with the drawing with your hands and etc so fingers sorry so yeah i do like oil pastels the best for um so yeah, that just goes through dry pastels, pastel pencils and oil pastels. The difference is coloured pencils, artist versus student grade, er the different types of erasers that you can get. Um, I've got one of those Mono Zero eraser pens, so handy, like I couldn't, I couldn't um, work without one of those. I used to use the putty erasers quite a lot um, and they are handy when you're doing um, charcoal work. So it's always good to have a range of um, erasers because you can use them for different things. Um, but nowadays I don't really use charcoal. I was only using charcoal for like studies and stuff like that. And, it, and charcoal is good for figure drawing as well. Um, but yeah, so I do love my Mono Zero eraser pen. I use that all the time. And also I would use, I use, um, it says here, hand broom or dust brush. I use like a fluffy old <coughs> paintbrush, large paintbrush, for, to, to brush off my eraser pieces. Blending tools. So there's different types of blending tools as well. Good to have a kind of range of those so that you can um, see which one suits you. You, you, soon, you soon find your favourites and then st you know you stick with what suits you. So you've got your stumps, um, chemis, chemis, chemos, cotton cloth or cotton cloth, blending stump brushes. You've got sharpening tools, blades, 
sandpaper pads, electric sharpeners, hand sharpeners and sharpeners for lead holders. Sharpeners in lead holders, I think. I don't know what that is, but yeah. Pen and ink. So we've got nibs and handles, fountain pens, brushes, Indian I India ink, non-waterproof inks, technical pens and markers. Avoid direct sunlight. Don't display drawings with colour or ink in direct sunlight because they'll eventually fade. Um, paper, different types of paper that you can use, newsprint, cotton papers, toned papers, paper weight, paper textures, grayscale value finder, mole, stick and bridges, fixatives, get good materials. An artist can create a masterpiece with very few materials, so lack of expensive supplies is no excuse for a bad start. However, get good materials because they can also make a big difference in your work and make your life a lot easier. Quality materials are also more permanent, which is crucial if you want your work to last. Um, chapter 2, the basic elements of drawing, shape, rectangles and cubes, colour, complementary colours, analogous colours, colour temperature, colourfulness. So we've got primary, secondary, territory, Complementary, analogous, what is analog? Analog, logos, colour schemes. Use colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel. Okay, I've not heard that term before. Interesting. Let's see, learning, we're learning something. Value. So it goes through your different values. Flat values, contrasting values. Edges. Edges separate colours or elements from each other. So we've got hard edge, soft edge and firm edges. And it says to watch tutorials related to this chapter, visit finearttips.com. Chapter 2. Chapter 3, beginning to draw the essentials. In this chapter, you will learn how to position your paper, how to hold your pencil and how, line wor and how lines work. Okay. Tripod grip, brush grip, finger on the tip. Making lines. Um, so they've got video tutorials, um, so good good to make use of those on finearttips.com. So we've got making lines. Chapter 4, first exercises. When a runner wants to improve his time, he doesn't just run the distance over and over, doing it again and again. It's part, um, sorry, doing it again and again is part of it, but he also does sit-ups to get stronger and other draw moves to improve. When a singer trains, she is first given breathing exercises and other exercises to master and months of preparation go by before she performs a song for an audience. So we've got exercise one, contour drawing. Exercise two, expressive drawing. Exercise three, drawing from memory. Chapter five, basic techniques. Mastering the fundamentals of drawing gives you the freedom to create what you want from quick sketches to to sound structures, it is essential to understand and practice basic net techniques because they give you the foundation on which to build your masterpieces. You're always putting together different approaches or techniques when drawing. With practice, this becomes second nature, but it's important at the beginning that you learn each texture individually. So we've got sketching, gesture drawing, line and value sketches, using basic shapes, Drawing a bear, blocking out, measuring, angles, negative space, putting it all together. You can watch the tutorial. Chapter 6, Light and Shadow. Light and shadow create a three-dimensional effect which is crucial for making a realistic drawing. It is magical when pigment on paper conjures up volume and makes a drawing come to life. This is achieved with values, lights and darks, that transition believably. As a general rule, you should have at least three values in your drawings, dark, middle and light. Areas of light, areas of shadow. Shading. There are many ways to shade. Smudging with different material, well, sorry, smudging with different media. Um, so you can watch the video on that chapter two. Chapter seven, still life projects. This chapter covers many of the basics you learned earlier in earlier chapters with two detailed still life demonstrations. Drawing still life is a great way to get started because you may already have your subjects easily at hand and it also gives you a strong foundation when you move on 
to other masterpieces. A full still life. Chapter 8, Composition. In the visual arts, composition is the arrangement of elements to produce, an aesthetic, produce aesthetic results. That is, to create desired effects such as attractiveness, beauty and emotion. When viewers look at art, their vision moves from one element to the next. It normally goes to the most important thing first, the vocal point. Then the viewer's eyes may move on to other elements in the drawing. As an artist, you can plan and direct this eye movement. You can guide the viewer to the most important elements and in most cases, you want the viewer's eyes to flow through the work, visiting other elements and coming back to the focal point. You can achieve this with artistic composition. Rules of emphasis. Rule of thirds. Symmetry. Balance. Framing the scene. Creating a visual path. Consider different compositions. There's a project there. You can watch the tutorial under chapter. Chapter 9, Perspective in Art. Perspective in drawing and art in general gives objects a flat surface, an illusion of three-dimensionality. There are two types of perspective. Linear perspective uses converging lines to represent the size of the objects as they appear smaller as the distance from the viewer increases. Atmospheric or aerial perspective has to do with the variations of value, colour and detail as the distance from the viewer increases. Both types of perspective are used to obtain the appearance of depth. It is of the utmost importance for an artist to understand perspective because if it is not right, your drawings will look awkward. Linear perspective, one point perspective, two point perspective, appearances in two Point perspective, roof, arches, multiple vanishing points in two point perspective, three point perspective, cityscape seen from above, linear perspective projects, there's some projects there. Street view with multiple vanishing points. Elements aren't always parallel. Atmospheric perspective. Landscape with hills. Chapter 10, drawing textures. You can create many realistic textures with graphite. I used the same materials for the following projects to create different effects. I used a mechanical pencil, but you can use other types with the same leads. Chapter 11, Drawing People. Some say bodies and faces are the most difficult subjects to draw. In this book, I want to give you some useful guidelines and tips that will make it easier for you. Drawing the eye. The mouth, the ears. The human body. The hands, the feet. Chapter 12, The Artist Survival Guide. In this chapter, you'll find some tips on being an artist that you may want to explore as you continue to work on your art, including how to keep a sketchbook, how to develop your own artistic style, how to get inspiration and how to draw from memory. Practical advice. Since one key point of keeping a sketchbook is having it with you wherever you are, it should be a size you can easily carry. I use two sketchbooks, one that is a lit about a letter size, that usually stays at my studio or home, as well as a tiny one that fits in my back pocket that I bring with me when I'm out. Use whatever size you can easily carry with you. Developing your own artistic style, which a lot of artists, people that are interested in art, um, always want to know about. Inspiration and overcoming artist's block. glossary so that was the end of the book um i actually think that this book in is very useful for a beginner it does it touches on all the main things that you'd need to kind of um be aware of and you can go through the book 
each chapter's got video linked to that chapter. So I think that's, that's very useful. So I think I'd give this book for a beginner um, five out of five stars from me. Um, I would recommend it um, as a beginning somewhere to start for drawing. So yeah, I highly recommend this book. I'd give it a five stars. Um, the fact that um, the, fi the five stars goes mainly due to the fact that it has um, videos for each chapter. I think that rounds it off nicely from a four to a five star and um, it brings something different to other books out there and that would probably have this go over these points but then they wouldn't have the the link in videos so i will leave a link to the book below let me know your thoughts on the book is this a book that you would buy what did you think of the book would you give it five stars what would you give it just by um having a, the flip through watching the flip through um let me know your thoughts Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe. Please like this video as well so I will can, can continue to make more content because it helps my channel and make sure you're subscribed for future videos. That's also important and I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.